Revit Up Racing has rapidly expanded its depth by producing quality content with your number one coverage in Michigan and Ontario, and so we have added Revit Up Racing Radio to our racing media platform. Revit Up Racing Radio is your short track racing grassroots coverage in late model, modified, ABC stock car, street stock, and four cylinder divisions. Listen weekly for short track news, rankings, schedules, and driver interviews. In this week's episode of Rev It Up Racing Radio, we have none other than Buddy Gray Jr. the fourth in a short uh, episode talking about uh, the the Hot Shoe 100 coming up uh, August 11th and 12th, and also uh, how uh, and what happened with his spin out at uh, Ken Ross this past week at uh, Ken Ross Speed Park. So uh, stay tuned and listen to a short uh, radio episode with uh, Buddy Gray Jr. the fourth. And enjoy. You're the fourth. How are you today, buddy? Doing great. Uh, can you talk a little bit th- this weekend, Ken Ross? The 24 J- uh, JR got a little spun out in the feature. Can you talk a little bit about that and what happened? Uh, yeah, I think um, I think it was just a racing deal. I mean, I was passing, uh, I believe it was Mark Lacto for the lead. It was about 10 to go. And uh, I thought I gave him plenty of room up top. But uh, I don't know. If I didn't, or if his car got out of shape, or what, but uh, I think it's just a racing deal, and uh, we live to race another day, so I think it all works out in the end. Now, was there much damage to the 24? Uh, nothing we couldn't fix, so, I mean, not not too bad then, so. Yeah, it makes uh, sense. It's, uh, we're all ready to go for the weekend already, so and not like, too bad. And, 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 co- and coming out of, like I say, coming out of Ken Ross, but with a third place, even with, with spinning out, this weekend you're headed into, I guess, say one of the biggest races in the Midwest, uh, United States, with you taking part in the Hot Shoe 100, and your family's probably, like say, probably one of the big groups that has helped hosting it, and 5,000s up for grabs. Is there any extra pressure with you, like say Friday, Saturday, with, like say, trying to get the win with uh, your parents hosting it and uh, 5,000 on the line? Uh, you know, I there may or may not be, but I, uh, I try not to think about it that way, you know, I you really got to go into it as is it's uh, just another race and uh, take it lap by lap and hopefully uh, come out on top, you know, have, hopefully the car will be good enough and just can't put that pressure on yourself, I guess. Yeah, exactly. And that's like you say, it's, it's more, again, the hot shoe is a great, like just a uh, fundraiser for cancer and stuff like that. And like you say, mom and dad, and uh, like you say, and uh, Kim and that are like say involved, put it, putting it on. Um, but for you, like you say, as soon as you get behind that wheel, you're 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 racing for the five thousand, right? Oh yeah, no doubt about it. I uh, I'm here to race and I'm here to have fun and put on a show and have a great time. So we go out there and we give it our all, give it our hundred percent every lap, and hopefully uh, hopefully come out on top. And you, you were you just you just raced down there this uh, like say this just this past weekend. So for you, it's almost like a, just a, a warm up for uh, getting ready for this weekend coming, right? Oh, for sure. Um, especially with, uh, I like to go down there and, you know, as, as I like the track as well, you know, I like to race there and whatnot. So it's an added bonus to be able to go down there and for uh, tune the car in per se. And, uh, but uh, we uh, have fun with it and go down there and hopefully uh, we can get the car working better and better each time we go down. And so you've done quite a few races already this season being only uh, mid August, but um for for this race, do you prepare any differently with being a hundred lap race? Like, and what do you have to do to make that fe- the the main feature on Saturday? Oh, uh, I mean, I have a lot of confidence in my uh, Burkett Nestor race car. I mean, they put together a great car, and uh, I think the main thing about putting it in the show is just do your homework on it and don't overthink it. Just don't overdrive. Just stay calm and cool and. Hopefully you can lock it in and work your way from there. You know, just get, take it one step at a time and keep yourself under control, and it'll all work out. And just a, l- a little bit about the hot shoe. I know, like you say, it's it's, it's like you're, you're helping. You're, you're headed down there tonight already. But can you just tell the people who don't know what the hot shoe 100 is, just so that they have an idea of wh- what we're talking about? Oh, it's um, it's a big uh, modified race that we we try to put on, not only to benefit uh, cancer and cancer survivors, research, and all that jazz, but um, also to give back to the racers and the racing community as well, obviously with this big purse that we give out. So we try to bring awareness to cancer because 
almost anyone you you know is affected by it some way or somehow. And um, like I said, not only give back to them, but give back to the community and just put on a great event for people to come out and have a good time. And like I was talking to your father this past this past weekend at Ken Ross, like at, at Ken Ross's race, and he's saying as of as of Sunday there was a 54 cars just for the mod division. So it's a h- h- huge race for all the divisions, but for the mods, it's probably one of the biggest in the Midwest, and it's going to be quite competitive for that uh, that five thousand dollars sitting on the line uh, on Saturday. Oh, for sure. There's going to be a lot of good cars, and uh, looking forward to it for sure. I mean, my, I always say you got to. Beat the best, be the best. So hopefully a lot of good cars show up and uh, duke it out for 100 laps and have a good time with it and put on a great event and just have fun. And this question here, I'm going to put you, I guess you say, on the spot. Like you say, th- this this season, like you say, it's been a very tight door-to-door racing with you and uh, Dustin Jackson at uh, Norway, Sands, Onaway, Ken Ross this season with – there's only two years difference between the two of you. Has there been any animosity, not off the track, but on the track when it comes to two young guys uh, battling it out? Uh, you know, it's, uh, I try not to think about it. I, I like to look out at whether it be Dustin Jackson being 17, 18 years old or my dad being 40, 45 years old or whoever it may be, you know, I, I like to look at everyone as a racer and go out there and race them competitively. And hopefully we, uh, I mean, I like to have great battles with everyone on the track, but uh, I can see uh, having a couple more battles with Dustin in the near future. So, and throughout our racing careers, but uh, you got to look at it just as he's another, he's another guy on the track and another, another car to beat. Yeah. Like you say, just some, I use coming from a fan's point of view is you, you guys, like I say, I've been seeing numerous races with you, with the two of you this year, and and I don't mean you guys stare at each other, like I say, out, out the side of the cards because you're paying attention to what you're doing. But like I say, for 19 year old and 17 year old, you guys have had quite a few battles and surely made it entertaining for the fans uh, so far this season at uh, different tracks throughout the Midwest. That's for sure. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's been fun, and uh, like I said, I like like to race hard with everyone we race against, and uh, I see uh, a lot of future battles. So hopefully we can uh, keep it fun, keep it clean, and race hard in the future. Now, is there, again, you say drivers are drivers, I understand that, but with, with a lot of, like you say, names that you might see because of doing top speed and a few other different tracks, like say down in the, the lower Michigan or uh, Ohio, with these guys, some of these guys coming up from different areas, is there anybody, you, like you say, coming that you, you like to race against? Oh, I like I like to race with, I mean, almost anyone. I mean, if 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 they're gonna run me clean, and run me hard, that's who I like to race against. I mean, you look at someone like Brian Nestor or Doug Meyer or uh, Travis Eddy. All those guys, they'll run you hard, but they'll run you as clean as possible too. So it's always fun to have a good hard side by side racing battles with any of those guys, you know, and especially someone that you don't get to race with a lot, you know. And you don't you get you see you see Travis like for you every so often you Josh Weir Barble you see him quite a bit um, guys like that or you come up to Ken Ross guys race so the Nesters and uh, like say uh, Bubba Brooks and guys you don't race too against too often it just it, it just changes the style of racing a little bit right oh yeah you like to uh, you like to keep your intensity up per se but uh, I mean. In the end, you got to give it 100 percent whoever you're racing against, and uh, go out there and we go out there to win every race we're in. So we like to have fun with it and race everyone hard and race everyone clean and do the best we can. So, but yeah, I guess a little bit of a uh, intensity would be added when you're trying to beat someone that you don't normally get to beat or someone who's been winning a lot downstate somewhere or whatever it may be. Now, not just not just this weekend, but like you say for for the whole season. Is there any uh, crew members or uh, sponsors you'd like to thank? So, like, going into not just the hot shoe, but going into the second half of the season? Yeah. Um, first and foremost, Bergen Nestor Race Cars. They've really helped me out a lot this year, um, especially doing their driver development program. It's been a lot of fun. And, uh, I mean, my dad's been helping me a lot in the shop. I mean, he works on it just as much as I do. And uh, we like to have fun with it. My mom's always there, my grandparents. I mean, I have buddies that come to the racetracks with me every now and then, and it's always a great help to have those guys around with me. And uh, I'd like to thank Nash Builders 
uh, Price Builders, um, Brian Frost Landscaping, and I mean, there's just too many to name, but those are just a few I'd like to give special thanks to. So, now and, uh, with well, their help, made a great season out of it. And like you say, the last question with um, and you say about running people clean and everything else, but the the first stop of the Triple Crown uh, on July 28th, you, we were at uh, Norway uh, Norway uh, Speedway, and we were down there, like I say, revved up racing was down there watching you guys and. In the modified feature, and in, like you said, you like to race anybody, you say, but with you and your dad battling for first and second out there, does it give you a little bit more intensity when you you look over and it's, it's dad sitting there? Does it give you a little bit more, uh, like say, you you, you want to beat him being being dad and sitting in that in that seat? Well, of course. It's my <laughs> old man. I got to for sure. But, uh, I mean, that is definitely a race I'll never forget in my entire life. I mean, for us to race that hard, for that long side by side and never touch each other it was uh it was a an incredible experience that i'll never forget and i mean for the last couple of years we've been racing and we've never got a chance to actually race and for us to race like that for so long so hard side by side and for me to actually beat them it, it uh it was quite fulfilling for sure i mean it made me really feel really good and we had a great time out there battling out now i don't know if you can say it on the radio but after you get out of the car what do you say to you uh, I guess uh, we just kind of looked at each other and gave each other a wink and uh, congratulated each other on it. So, I mean, we uh, we had a good time for sure. And uh, it's definitely, like I said, something I'll never forget. It was uh, it was a blast. And especially on a new track like that, Modified's never been there before. And it was, uh, it was, I mean, something I can't even explain how awesome it was. Yeah, and, that's, and that's totally understandable. And as, like I say, Dad helped you in the garage and underneath the car and, to be able to get him behind a wheel and race side by side, uh, it, for for any driver, it's uh, it's that way. Like today, I was talking to George Wilson about about Chase going down to uh, to the hot shoe running the ABC division as a thirteen year old, and I said, George, will you ever get in the car to race Chase? And he goes, Yeah, hopefully, and uh, it'd be the same experience. But you, it's not too often you get to, to race beside your dad, right? For sure, it's uh, not many people get to do it. I'm very uh, fortunate to be able to say that I could. And- like a couple of weeks ago up there in Norway, you race them like that. It was uh, something very special, and I don't take any of it for granted for sure. It's uh, it's a cool experience to have. Well, uh, buddy, uh, thank you very much, and good luck this this weekend at Whittemore, the Hot Shoe 100, and hopefully uh, we can talk when we're down there. Oh, for sure, Jay. Thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate it. Thank you. We'll, we'll talk this weekend. Sounds good. Nobody gets you closer to the action than Rev It Up Racing. For all your short track racing and late model, modified, ABC stock cars, street stocks, and four-cylinder division, visit RevItUpRacing.net for all your racing coverage.